Hi everyone, today I will show you how to use After Effects and Gaussian splatting to animate real life 3D captures. By the end of this video, you will know how to create a dynamic reveal effect, produce smooth 3D camera movements, and seamlessly integrate text or graphics into your scene. If you have no idea how to capture 3D scans, don't worry, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial that teaches you how to use an app called Luma to capture your own 3D scans using just your smartphone. So you might want to pause here, watch that Luma tutorial first, and then return to this video. To get started, head over to this page on lumalabs.ai, I will leave a link in the description box. Make sure you log in using the same account that you used to capture the scans. Once you're in, you will have access to all your captures, find the capture you want to import into After Effects and click on the download icon, then find the Gaussian Splat option and click on it to download the scene. Inside the downloaded archive, you will find a 3D object file. Next, head over to aescripts.com and search for the Gaussian Splatting plugin. You have the option to try it for free, but that version will likely add a watermark on your video, so you will need to purchase the plugin to be able to use it fully. I did reach out to a AE scripts to get you all a good discount on the plugin but unfortunately I didn't hear back from them so instead I'm giving away a $50 gift card that you can use on AE scripts to purchase this Gaussian splatting plugin simply leave a comment on this video and I will select one random winner you can find more information in the description box and by the way the same plugin is also available for DaVinci Resolve after downloading you will find an archive containing the After Effects plugin files and a PDF that includes installation instructions. Just make sure you follow these steps before launching After Effects. Once you've done that, open After Effects. The first thing you will want to do is create a new composition. For social media videos, you can go with 1080 by 1920. Set your composition's duration, give it a descriptive name, and click OK to create it. And to import the scene, drag and drop the 3D object file into the project panel, then add it to your composition. At this point, you will only see a small gray box. You can go ahead and hide this layer. Now go to Layer, New, Solid. Let's call this Scene. Choose any color and then click OK. In the Effects panel, search for Gaussian Splatting. To apply the effect, drag and drop it onto the scene layer. And here you can add up to 10 different models. Let's open model number one. Click here to select the 3D object and choose the capture that you added to your composition. If you go to the transform controls, you can adjust the position, scale, rotation and other properties of your 3D scene. However, this method is a bit tedious and time consuming. There is a much simpler way. Go to layer, new, camera. Make sure you set the type to two node camera. Choose your camera's focal length. I like to go with 35 mm and click OK. Now by using the camera tools, you can orbit around, adjust the camera position and change the distance from the subject. Before we dive into the effects, let's look at some crucial settings in this plugin. You can enable show pivot to reveal your scene's anchor point. This pivot is what the camera orbits around and uses as its point of interest. However, you can change it. Simply open the align settings. Here you can change the pivot point's position. If we move it away from the subject, you will notice that the camera now pivots around this new anchor point. Let's reset it to its original coordinates and hide the pivot. Another important part of this plugin is the crop setting. Let's open this and enable the crop shape. If you increase the crop shape size, you will reveal more of the subject and enabling the crop shape preview gives you a visual representation of the crop shape. You can also switch the shape type to a box if you want. You can increase the scale of the crop shape and move it along any of the 3D axis. As you can see, I've removed the environment using the crop shape option. Later in the video, I will show you how this feature Feature can be very useful. But for now, let's focus on creating the reveal effect. To do that, open the effects settings. You will see a variety of effects to play with, but we will start with the splat opacity. Let's enable it. By increasing the opacity shape size, we can reveal more parts of our scene. Similar to the crop settings, you can enable the opacity shape preview for a clearer view of its position and scale. You can also adjust the feather to control the edge softness. 
I prefer to stick to 50%. We can also see the center point of the opacity effect and you can move this anywhere you want. I'm shifting it towards the head because I think that would be a better starting point. Now let's test it out by reducing the opacity size. Notice how the reveal now starts from a completely different position. Remember these effects work in combination when applied to the same model. If we re-enable the crop shape effect, the opacity effect can only reveal what's within the cropped area. For now let's disable the crop shape again. Alright let's turn off the shape preview. Actually let's disable the splat opacity effect entirely for now. I want to show you another effect that you can use to create the reveal animation, the splat scale effect. Its settings are very similar to the opacity effect but when you enable it you will notice the edges look different. It has some sort of a pixelation effect. Instead of changing the opacity of each pixel, this effect changes the size of every single pixel which creates a digital look. I personally prefer this and you can move the center point anywhere in your scene. You might have noticed in my animation that when the scene is being revealed there is a blue color around the edges. To create this effect go to the splat color effect and enable it. Open the color gradient. First change the blending mode to add. By increasing the color shape size you can control how far the color spreads around the scene. The color effect has a starting point. I will position it near the same center point of the scale effect. Initially you will see a solid white gradient. To change this double click on the color markers. I usually set the inner color to black so it becomes invisible. Then I'll change the outer color to blue and by double clicking here you can add more colors. For example, I'm adding some orange between the black and blue. The look you achieve depends on your creative preference so make sure you experiment with the gradient. To remove a color simply click and drag it away from the gradient. I'm happy with how it looks now and to ensure that the color spread matches the splat size you can copy the value of the splat scale size and paste it into the color shape size which will align both effects. Now that we've determined which effects to use for the reveal let's animate it. Start at the very first frame of your timeline Go to the splat scale effect, find the scale shape size and enable its stopwatch to start adding keyframes. Set the value to 0 to completely hide the scene. Move forward about 3 or 4 seconds and increase the scale shape size until you reveal the entire scene or parts of it depending on your preference. And when you press play you will have your reveal animation which clearly still needs some work. To further refine this select the scene layer and press U to reveal the keyframes. Let's make a few adjustments. First, let's extend the animation by moving the second keyframe further along the timeline. Second, let's smooth out the sudden start by selecting the first keyframe, right click on it and choose keyframe assistant, easy ease. This creates a slow start that gradually accelerates. Now let's sync the blue color with the animation. First return to the first frame and enable the stopwatch for the color shape size. Press U again with the scene layer selected. Then select both keyframes and press Ctrl C to copy them from the scale shape size and paste them onto the color shape size. And just like that, the color and splat scale are now in perfect sync. Remember, you can still fine tune other settings even after creating your animation keyframes. Now that you've learned how to create the reveal animation, let's learn how to add some camera movement. First, I will disable the splat scale temporarily to be able to to view the entire scene while working on the camera movement. Select your camera and open its properties. Go to the very beginning of your timeline in the transform settings. Enable the stopwatch for both point of interest and position. Let's move the camera behind the subject and move it back further to start from a distance. After setting your initial camera position, move forward in the timeline and adjust the camera to where you want it to be at that particular time code. You can repeat this process throughout your timeline. Depending on the camera animation that you want to create, you can add multiple keyframes to create a camera path. Now if we preview this, you will notice it's not very smooth. There's a slight pause at each keyframe, so we will need to refine this further. One option is to select all the keyframes 
and press F9 to apply the classic easy ease effect. While this can be great in certain scenarios, the goal is to create a single seamless trajectory with no interruptions. And I'm going to show you an easy method to achieve that. Let's undo the easy ease and go to the bottom right corner of the composition window where it says one view. Click on this drop down list and change it to two views. With the right view selected, change the camera angle to top and zoom out a bit. Now, when you select the camera layer, you will have a better view of the camera path. As you can see, each point along this line represents a keyframe and they all have a linear shape, which causes those pauses that you saw in the animation. To fix this, select the pen tool and click once on each keyframe. Notice how the path now looks more curved and you can use the handles to adjust the curvature of each frame individually. Let's take a look at the new animation. Notice the huge improvement here. The camera movement looks significantly better. Let's select the last keyframes and press F9 to ease the animation towards the end. That's much better. Remember, you can also animate other camera properties. Here, I added several orientation keyframes and changed the camera roll throughout the animation. Small changes like these make the movement appear more natural. And I suggest you also try keyframing the zoom setting to adjust the camera's focal length throughout the animation. Once you're satisfied with the camera animation, return to the Gaussian splatting effect and re-enable the splat scale. Now let's have a look at the result. You see how by combining the reveal animation with the camera motion, we've made the video 100 times better. Next, I will show you how to integrate text into your scene. Select the text tool and click anywhere in the composition window to type your text. You can use the character tab to adjust the text size. Don't worry about the position of your text yet. Just click here to convert the text layer to 3D. Notice how the text now floats in 3D space and it remains in the same position when you move the camera to move the text use the transform settings to adjust its position, rotation and scale. And while you do that, keep an eye on the second view. I'll rotate my text to match the ground's perspective. And by the way, you can also adjust rotation directly in the view window. Let's place it directly on the ground. To do this properly, switch the second view to right. This gives us a better view of the ground's perspective. I'll move the text down so it aligns with the bottom of my shoes in the scene. Let's increase the character size and move the text a bit closer to the camera. Now, when we play the video, you will see the text perfectly placed on the ground as if it's part of the scene. But when playing the entire animation, you will notice a problem. As the camera moves behind the subject, the text appears on top of it, which is not good. But here is a simple fix. Duplicate the scene layer, rename the copy to subject and move it above the text layer. Go to model, open the crop settings and enable the crop shape. This top layer will now only show the subject. Playing the video now, you will see that the text doesn't appear on top of the subject and to make sure the text is revealed along with the rest of the animation, select the text layer and change its track mat to the scene layer. When you do this, the scene layer will be automatically hidden, so make sure you re-enable it. Let's have a look. Nice, we now have the text revealing seamlessly along with the scene. You can get creative with your animation, add more text, additional visuals and effects. For example, I used an effect called VC Saber to create a glowing circle around the subject. All of this, along with everything else you see in my final video, is part of the project file that's already available on my Patreon page. If you're a subscriber, you can access the project to dive deeper into the effects and camera movements that I used. Another the thing I like to do, especially when working with camera movements in After Effects, is creating an adjustment layer and adding the RSMB effect. This adds a natural looking motion blur to the scene. Keep in mind though that it does consume more memory and will slow down your preview a bit. You can also apply the Lumetri effect to this same adjustment layer and do some color grading. Once you've finished editing, find your animation's ideal endpoint and press N to mark the end of your working area, then go to composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder. Here you can tweak your export settings and choose a save location. Finally, click here to render your animation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and picked up on some new skills. Stay creative and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.